In this video, I'm going to go over chapter 15, which is about infinitives. What is an infinitive? An infinitive is 2 plus the root form of the verb. Infinitive of purpose, in order to. He came here in order to study English. In order to is used to express purpose. It answers the question why. In order is often omitted, as in B. He came here to, in order to study English. He came here to study English. And so sometimes the in order in the in order to is omitted in conversational English. Incorrect. He came here for studying English. He came here for to study English. He came here for study English. To express purpose, use in order to, not for, with a verb. I went to the store for some bread. For can be used to express purpose, but it is a preposition and is followed by a noun object, as in, I went to the store for some bread. I went to the store to buy some bread. The phrase be used for expresses the typical or general purpose of a thing. In this case, the preposition for is followed by a gerund. A saw is used for cutting wood. Also possible, a saw is used to cut wood. However, to talk about a particular thing and a particular situation, be used to plus an infinitive is used. A chain was used to cut, not for cutting, down the old um, oak tree. Error analysis. I went to the library for study last night. No, it's I went to the library to study last night. Helen borrowed my dictionary to look up the spelling of occurred. You don't say for to. The teacher opened the window to let in some fresh air. So you don't say for letting. I came to this school to learn English. So you don't say for learn English. I traveled to Osaka to visit my sister. You don't say for to visit my sister. So all of these are incorrect. He came here for studying English. He came here for to study English. He came here for study English. And so here, I went to Chicago to visit my relatives. I went to, to Chicago for a business uh, ex conference. I went to the market for a purpose. I went to the market for doing my groceries. Mary went to the market to buy groceries. I went to the doctor to get a physical. My son went to the doctor for a broken foot. I swim every day to become healthy. My friend swims every day for physical fitness. So when you use for, you need to have an object of a preposition. So here, in other words, you need a noun. So I went to the market for groceries. Mary went to the market to buy groceries. See, that's the difference. When you have two, you have to have an infinitive to buy groceries. And when you have four, you simply have a noun. In other words, object of a preposition. I went to the, to the market for groceries. My son went to the doctor for a physical. Okay, so that's a noun. And you, you have to use a noun, whereas I swim every day to get physically fit. My friend swims every day for exercise. So here you have the object of a preposition. I drove into the service station to get gas. They stopped at the service station for gas. So here, to get gas, for gas. That's the difference. So when you use for, when you want to say purpose, you have to put some kind of noun. And when you use to for a purpose, that's short for in order to get gas. You know, in order to um, get fit, in order to get a physical, in order to visit my relatives. But the thing is, we don't always say in order to. And so here, I went to the garden center in order to get some fertilizer for my flowers. 
When the teacher asked him a question, Jack pretended to understand what she was saying. My roommate asked me to clean up the dishes after dinner. I bought a new uh, screwdriver in order to repair my bicycle. My mother always said I should eat lots of uh, vegetables in order to make my body strong. Mustafa climbed onto a chair to change a light bulb in the ceiling. You can say this one's either one. I really want to learn Italian before I visit Venice next year. I jog three times a week in order to stay healthy. Or you can say I jog three times a week to stay healthy. It is a good idea to know where your children are at all times. I need to find her in order to talk to her. Rita has to work at two jobs in order to support herself and her three children. Jim finally went to the dentist in order to get some relief from his toothache. It's easier for me to understand written English than it is uh, to understand spoken English. I practice speaking in English into a tape recorder in order to improve my pronunciation. It isn't important to speak English without an accent. Oh, it is. It isn't important to speak English without an accent, as long as people understand what you're saying. Adjectives followed by infinitives. So these adjectives are always followed by an infinitive, and you cannot use these adjectives. Uh, you cannot use these. Yeah, you cannot use these adjectives to be followed by a, a gerund. So certain adjectives can be followed immediately by infinitives. In general, these adjectives describe a person, not a thing. Many of these adjectives describe a person's feelings or attitudes. We were sorry to hear the bad news. I was surprised to see Tim at the meeting. I'm glad to help my students in the classroom. I'm happy to see my students succeed. I'm pleased to see my students get A's. I'm delighted to see all my students succeed. I'm content to stay home on a weekend. I'm relieved to not have to do math anymore. I'm lucky to be able to work from home. I'm fortunate to be able to work from home. I'm sorry to announce that you no longer have a job. I'm sad to announce you no longer have a job. I'm upset to see that you are so upset. I'm so, I'm so upset to see that you lost your job. I'm disappointed to have such a low grade on my paper. I'm proud to get an A on my paper. I'm ashamed to have so many pimples on my face. I'm ready to go out. I'm prepared to get an A. I'm anxious to see my, my uh, blind date for the first time. I'm eager to go out on, on the weekends. I'm willing to work on the weekends. I'm motivated to do my um, classwork. I'm determined to do my classwork. I'm careful not to step in dog poo. I'm hesitant to, I'm reluctant to do math. I'm afraid to do math. So all of these all take infinitives. Um, Mary always speeds on the, on the expressway. She's certain to get stopped by the police. She's likely to get a ticket. So these are all infinitives, adjectives, followed by an infinitive. What are you careful to do before you cross a busy street? Why are children so, what are what are children sometimes afraid to do? Children are afraid to uh, walk around uh, in the dark. When you're tired in the evening, what are you content to do? When I'm tired in the evening, I'm content to read a good book. So all of these adjectives take a infinitive. This box or that box is too heavy for Bob to lift. That box is very heavy but Bob can lift it. In the speaker's mind, the use of to implies a negative result. In too heavy, it is possible for Bob to lift that box. In very uh, heavy, it is possible but difficult for Bob to lift that box. I am strong enough to lift that box. I can lift it. I have enough strength 
to lift that box. I have, have enough I have strength enough to lift that box. So enough follows an adjective as in C. And then usually enough precedes a noun. So in formal English it may follow a noun. I have strength enough to lift that box. Yeah, that sounds a lot more. When you say I have strength enough to lift that box, that sounds very written English, very formal English. So here you would say that ring is too expensive. I can't buy it. That ring is too expensive for me to buy. I'm too tired. I can't I can't I don't want to go to the meeting. I'm too tired to go to the meeting. It's too it's too late. I'm too tired to do work. It's too cold. I'm too cold to go outside. Nuclear physics is too difficult. It's too difficult for me to take a nuclear physics class. I'm too busy. I'm too busy to go to talk on the phone with you. My son is too young to uh, learn about anything, to learn about calculus. The mountain cliff is too steep. This, steep, this cliff is too steep for me to climb. So using uh, infinitives with to and enough, passive and pass passive and past forms of infinitives and gerunds. To see, to have seen, seeing, having seen, to be seen, to have been seen, being seen, having been seen. So if you have the simple um, infinitive, so simple infinitive to see, and then the past tense of the simple infinitive to have been, and then the past tense of the simple gerund is having seen. Then the passive voice. The past passive infinitive uh, would be to have been seen and the past passive gerund is having been seen. So past infinitive. The rain seems to have stopped. So this is the past infinitive. I appreciate having had the opportunity to meet the king. So this is the past gerund. Both of these are in active voice. Now in passive voice. So a passive voice is when the subject receives the action. I didn't expect to be invited to his party. So this is a passive infinitive. In other words, in the past, um, in the passive voice, this is the past tense of the infinitive. Passive gerund. I appreciate being invited to your home. Here you have passive voice, and this is the past tense of the passive voice. Non, uh, past passive infinitive. Nadia is fortunate to have been given a scholarship. Past passive uh, gerund. I appreciate having been told the news. So here are some examples. I don't enjoy being laughed at by other people. I'm angry at him for not telling or not having uh, been told the truth. It is easy to be fooled by his lies. I expect, I expected to have been invited to the party, but I wasn't. Sometimes adolescents complain about not being understood by their parents. Your compositions are supposed to be written in ink. Jin Wan had a narrow escape. He was almost hit by a car. He barely avoided being hit by a speeding uh, vehicle. Miss Thompson is always willing to help if there is a problem in the office, but she doesn't want to be called at home unless there is an emergency. Jack Wells had, has a good chance of being elected. I know I'm going to vote for him. Carlos appears to have lost some weight. Has he been ill? You must tell me the truth. I, I insist on being told the truth. Don't all of us want to be loved and to be needed by other people? I am guilty about not having written to you sooner, but I've been swamped with work lately. You know Jim Frankenstein, don't you? Jim Frankenstein? I don't think so. I don't recall ever having met him. Mr. Go mentioned being, being injured, having been injured in an accident as a child, 
but he never told us the details. Tim was in the army during the war. He was caught by the enemy, but he managed to escape. He is lucky to have escaped with his life. Is Abdul a transfer student? Where did he go to school before he came here? I'm not sure, but I think he mentioned something about going to UCLA or USC. We would like to be invited to the president's reception at the Pearl Hotel uh, last week, but we weren't, but we weren't. Oh, we would like to have been invited to the president's reception at Pearl Harbor last week, but we weren't. So using gerunds or passive infinitives following need. I need to borrow some money. John needs to be told the truth. So using an infinitive following need. The house needs painting. The house needs to be painting. Needs to be painted. And so here when we use, so the verb need can be to take either an infinitive or it can take a, uh, it can take a gerund. So using an infinitive need in certain circumstances, a gerund may follow need. In this case, the gerund carries a passive meaning. Usually the situations involve fixing or improving something. And so when you use um, needs, painting, that means someone needs to paint the house. It really needs painting. So that means it, it's something that needs to be fixed or improved. The house needs to be painted. Okay, so when you say needs painting, you're expressing the fact that house that house looks really worn down and really needs. So that's like more emphasis than uh, the house needs to be painted. So when you want to put emphasis on uh, with needs to do something, then you use the gerund. The chair is broken. I need to fix it. The chair needs fixing. And also, there's not too much difference in meaning between the house needs painting and the house needs to be painted other than tone. And so needs painting has a lot more emphasis than the house needs to be painted. The baby's diaper is wet. It needs to be changed. So if it's not urgent, then you say it needs to be changed. But if it's something urgent, like that diaper is leaking and, and getting all over the sofa, then you go, it needs changing now. What a mess. The room needs cleaning up. We need to clean it up before the company arrives. So notice how what a mess, the emphasis, and then you would use need plus the gerund. My shirt is wrinkled. It needs to be uh, ironed. There is a hole in our roof. The roof needs uh, repairing. I have books or the roof needs to be repaired. I have books and papers all over my desk. I need to take some time to straighten up my desk. It really needs straightening up. The apples on the tree are ripe. They need to be picked. The dog's been digging in the mud. He needs washing or he needs to be washed. So all, all, it, all it is is a difference in emphasis and tone. Using a possessive to modify a gerund. We came to class late. Mr. Lee complained about the fact. Formal. Mr. Lee complained about our coming to class late. Informal. Mr. Lee complained about us coming to class late. So in formal English, a possessive adjective, our, is used to modify a gerund. In informal English, the object form of a pronoun is frequently used. And so Mr. Lee complained about our coming to class late. And so here you use um, a gerund to modify um, a possessive pronoun. Our is modifying coming. So coming is the gerund. Mr. Lee complained about Mary's coming to class late. Mr. Lee complained, oh, formal. Mr. Lee complained about Mary's coming to class late. Informal, Mr. Lee complained about Mary's, uh, Mary coming to class late. And so in, in, in formal English, you have that possessive, Mary's coming to class late. And then in informal, you don't have that possessive over there. So the possessive, if the possessive is missing, then that means that's spoken English. 
And spoken English, informal English, is when you're speaking to your friends and family, and then if you're writing a paper, an academic paper for your teacher at work, then you would use apostrophe S. So that is, in very formal English, you would use a possessive to modify the gerund coming. Using a possessive to modify a gerund, combine the pairs of sentences. Change that fact to a gerund phrase. Use formal English. Discuss informal usage. Mary won a scholarship. We are excited about that fact. We are excited about Mary's winning a scholarship. He didn't want to go. I couldn't understand that fact. I couldn't understand his not wanting to go. You took, you took the time to help us. We greatly appreciate that fact. And so we greatly, we, uh, you took the time to, uh, to, to help us and we greatly appreciate, um, and we're greatly appreciating what you did for us. So basically what you do is when you have the uh, possessive here, that's formal English, and then when you don't have the possessive, that's informal English. So using verbs of perception. I saw my friend run down the street. I saw my friend running down the street. I heard the rain fall on the roof. I heard the rain falling on the roof. So certain verbs of perception followed by the simple form of the ing verb, there is a very often very little difference between the ing form and while. So for example, I saw my friend while she was running down the street has the same meaning as I saw my friend running down the street. So whether you use while or not is still the same meaning. I saw my friend while she was running down the street or I saw my friend run down the street or I saw my friend running down the street all have the same meaning. I heard the rain fall on the roof. I heard the rain falling on the roof. I heard the rain when it was falling on the roof. It all sounds the same. It, it all means the same. While I walked into the apartment, I heard my roommate singing in the shower. I heard a famous opera star sing at the concert last night. Sometimes there is a clear difference between using the simple form of ing and the use of the ing form gives the idea that an activity is already in progress when it is perceived. The singing was in progress when I first heard it. I heard the singing from beginning to end. It was not in progress when I first heard it. So here, I saw my friend um, taking a shower in the bathroom. I noticed a bird chirping in a tree. I watched TV or I noticed my or I saw my friend watching TV. I looked at my my uh, friend uh, watching TV. I observed my friend watching TV. I heard my friend uh, whistling in the uh, while walking her dog. I listened I saw my friend listen to music. I smell roses. Uh, or I noticed my friend smelling roses. So here, I heard, I noticed, I saw. So basically, you when you, pers when you use verbs of perception, like I saw plus a person plus a gerund, that's how you do it, or plus an infinitive. So I saw plus a person. I saw my friend. I saw my boyfriend. I saw my mother um, whistling or sleeping or sitting on the couch. So when you use verbs of perception, then you use either a gerund or an infinitive. And both have the same meaning. It has the same meaning as while. So basically, you heard the rain, but the rain was already falling when you saw it falling on the roof. Polly was working in her garden. She didn't hear the phone ringing or ring. I like to listen to the birds singing when I get up early in the morning. The guard observed a suspicious looking person uh, looking or casing 
were looking into the bank. There was an earthquake in my hometown. It was just a small, just it was just a small one, but I could feel the ground shaking. I was almost asleep last night. I suddenly heard someone unlocking uh, or knocking on the door. While I was waiting for my plane, I watched other planes uh, taking off and landing. So here is when you notice something plus either a geron or an infinitive. So using the simple form after let, after let and help, my father lets me drive his car. I let my friend borrow my uh, bicycle. Let's go for a movie. So let is followed by a simple form of a verb, not an infinitive. My father lets me to drive his car. So you cannot use an infinitive after let. So when I say the simple form, the simple infinitive form means that you just use the root form of the verb. So for, in, for instance, the infinitive form of a verb would be to eat. And then the simple form of the infinitive simply is eat without the to. So that means that my father lets me drive his car. So that is the simple form of the infinitive. I let my husband borrow my bicycle. Let's go to a movie. So you do not say, my father lets me to drive his car. You cannot say, I let my friend to borrow my bicycle. So you take out the two, and as soon as you take out the two, that becomes the simple form of the infinitive. My friend helped me wash my car. My brother helped me to wash his car. Now, if you use a, an infinitive, help is often followed by a simple form of a verb. An infinitive is also possible. Both are correct. So with let's, you cannot use to. So with let's, you cannot say, uh, I let my mother to uh, tell me what to do. I let my mother tell me what to do. But when you have the verb help, help you can use both the simple form and the infinitive form. Why is this the case? I have no idea. This is so idio, idiosync, you know, idiomatic, and English has so many irregular, irregular rules that does not have a that doesn't follow logic. It's just it, it is what it is, and that that's what frustrates ESL students the most is when it doesn't follow any kind of logic they can so that they can remember it. My father helped me to wash my car. So either one, if you say my. Brother, sorry, my brother helped me to wash my car, or my brother helped me to wash my car. Both are correct. Both have the same meaning. I think that when you use the infinitive form, though, you do sound more formal. So if you're going to use this structure, use the more formal infinitive form for written formal English. Don't let me forget to take my keys to the house with me. The teacher usually lets us um, do our homework in class. Why did you let your roommate take your uh, keys or take your car? You shouldn't let other people uh, order you around. A stranger helped the lost child find her mother. It was very kind of my friend to help me uh, find my car. To keep working, don't let me disturb you. Could you help me lift this a suitcase and put it into the um, suitcase bin. So using causative verbs make, have, and get. Make, have, and get can be used to express the idea that X causes Y to something. When they are used as causative verbs, their meanings are similar but not identical. My brother had no choice. I insisted that he carry my luggage. In B, my brother carried my luggage because I asked him to. In C, I managed to persuade my brother to carry my luggage. So A, I made my brother carry my suitcase. I had my brother carry my suitcase. I got my brother to carry my suitcase. And so when you use, when you use A, my brother had no choice. I made him do it, okay? And then uh, B, my brother carries my suitcase because I had my brother carry my suitcase. And then the, um, yeah, okay. So I made my brother carry my suitcase means that 
you're bigger and stronger and you, you boss someone around and you, you told them what to do. I made my brother, if you, don't, if you don't do it, I will beat you up. So I made my brother carry my suitcase or else. B, I had my brother carry my suitcase. That means I politely asked my brother to carry my suitcase. And then here, I got my brother to carry my suitcase it means that I had to argue with my brother and say, oh, come on, you're stronger than me. You, 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 you have bigger muscles than me. You can lift this and I can't. So you, you should help me. In other words, you got to beg someone to do it for you. Then it becomes, I got my brother to carry my suitcase. So it makes someone to do something, at, makes someone simple form, uh, X has Y. So Mrs. Lee made her son clean his room. Sad movies make me cry. So the causative make is followed by the simple form of a verb, not an infinitive. So it's incorrect to say she made him to clean the room. Make gives the idea that X forces Y to do something. Mrs. Lee's son had no choice. So whenever you make someone do something, that's usually a bully or an adult making a child or a bully forcing an, a smaller child to do something. So I made uh, Robert uh, pay me his lunch money. So that means if you don't give me your lunch money, I will beat you up. So make means you force someone to do something. I had the plumber repair the task. Jan had the waiter bring her some tea. Had means that you politely ask the waiter to, to bring you your tea, or you politely ask the plumber to stay longer uh, to fix the pipes. So had is politely asking. Makes means you order someone. And I got my brother or I got his friends means that you persuade someone and persuade someone to the point of begging someone to get something done. So that's the difference between make, have, and get. The doctor made the patient stay in bed. Um, Mary had her house painted. The teacher had the class write a 200, 2,000 word research paper. So had the class write means that she requested, okay? I made my son wash the windows before he could go outside and play. So that means that you forced your son. Uh, Costa, Costa got some kids in the neighborhood to clean out his garage. So that means that somebody asked politely uh, and persuaded, practically begged the kids to clean out his garage. I went to the bank to have a check cashed. Tom had a headache yesterday, so he got his twin brother Tim to go to class for him. The teacher didn't know the difference. When Scott went shopping, he found a jacket that he really liked. After he had the sleeves shortened, it fit him perfectly. My boss made me redo my report because he wasn't satisfied with it. So anytime you make someone do something, it's usually somebody in top authority forcing someone else to do something. Alice stopped at the service station to have the tank filled. I got Rosa, uh, oh, I got Rosa to lend me some money so I could go to a movie last night. So that means begging someone to lend you some money. Got. Mrs. Fields, Mr. Fields went to a doctor to have a wart on his nose removed. I spilled some tomato sauce on my suitcase. Now I need to get my suit clean. Peeling onions always makes me cry. Tom Sawyer was supposed to paint the fence, but he didn't want to. He was a very clever guy. Somehow he got his friends to do it for him. Oh, that was my, the favorite part of that book. We had a professional photographer take pictures of everyone who participated in our wedding. So that's how you use it for a causative, that's how you use the infinitive with causative verbs. And the next chapter is going to be chapter 16 about coordinating conjunctions. And so this ends this video on gerunds and infinitives. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me.